Male Contraceptive Initiative is a small nonprofit 501c3 based in Durham, North Carolina. And what we do is provide grants and advocacy efforts to support product developers in the non-hormonal reversible male contraceptive space. Male Contraceptive Initiative's mission is to provide men and their partners with more opportunities to have reproductive autonomy, which means really being able to protect themselves, their relationships, and each other from unintended pregnancy. Some of the major efforts that we undertake at Male Contraceptive Initiative are grant making. So we do one large grant cycle every year, and then we also support fellows. So we're trying to um, refresh the, the next generation of product developers and contraceptive researchers. We have a youth advisory board, so we're getting, you know, the, the methods in development now are not for me or my generation, it's for the next generation. And so we really want their voices heard. So we do a lot of community engagement as well. Why we don't have male contraceptives on the market today is really driven by a misbelief that the science is too challenging, as well as this notion that women should be responsible for, you know, shouldering family planning responsibilities. Um, with more male contraceptives on the market, we're hoping that that paradigm will shift and that we'll have a more equitable understanding of who uh, contributes to family planning objectives. We found in a study that Male Contraceptive Initiative did in the U.S. alone that over 17 million men are seeking novel forms of male contraception. And then the global research that we've been working on with partners over the past couple of years has demonstrated on a global level up to 70% of men um, in seven countries are interested in having novel methods available to them. We're hoping that the results from the market research activity that we did in collaboration with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is that we can really start to change that narrative. And really it's about, again, bringing more funding into the field to demonstrate to investors in particular that not only is there a market, it's a massive market, it's a global market. And the opportunity is there to have you know, gains, but also an impact in the public health space. ASIL is working on an on-demand pill uh, that inhibits a sperm motility as well as a capacitation to be able to fertilize an egg. What we're seeing is uh, th this aligns uh, significantly with uh, the data coming out of uh, the, the market research. The on-demand pill and on-demand options are limited on the female side, and so both on the male and the female side we're seeing a significant opportunity for an on-demand uh, option like this. My hope for the development of the on-demand pill is that we can actually provide another option, right, for, for couples. Uh, I think there's a, a big opportunity in that to help close uh, the gap in, in unintended pregnancies. Given that there are very few options on the male side, what we're seeing in, even in the modeling of the data is the greatest opportunity to close that gap uh, is going to be through male uh, contraception. Your Choice Therapeutics is a company that was founded in 2018 with the idea of developing non-hormonal contraceptives for women and men. We were able to collaborate with researchers at the University of Minnesota and ultimately develop this non-hormonal contraceptive pill for men. Our lead molecule, YCT529, is a new chemical entity that prevents sperm production and sperm release from the testis and it does so by modulating RAR alpha. MCI has done a great role of being a key opinion leader in, a, in an otherwise nascent space. Having one key opinion leader who's able to non-competitively bring people together, highlight what the field looks like, and support individuals' work is particularly helpful. The social impact of having more male methods available is really, we talk about gender equity a lot these days, and to me, this is the root of gender equity. It's men supporting their female partners by saying, hey, I can, you know, we can trade off contraception or I can contracept as well, so we have double protection. It really opens up a whole new dynamic in the conversation around reproductive health and contraception. It is crucial to share and advocate for male contraceptives because in doing so, we are able to build and facilitate empathy. So empathy is critically important for men to understand what their female partners are going through, for female partners to understand um, how frustrating it is for men not to have access to birth control methods for themselves. 
And I think through that empathy, we'll start building demand, you know, not just for methods for ourselves or for the, our partners, but for everyone. I think MCI's role in the future of male contraception is really hopefully to continue to adapt in addressing the needs of the community. As a small organization, we're nimble and we really have tried to work closely with our grantees. So hopefully we'll continue to evolve with them to support their needs as we move through the product development process and ultimately into the market and introduction. I think the future of male contraception is really exciting to think about. It's a blank canvas right now with so many products in early development, but it's gonna look very similar to what we see for female contraception. There's no one size fits all. Uh, contraceptive needs change throughout a person's life span. You know, your reproductive journey is, is very unique on an individual basis. So we really wanna have a, a suite of options available for people to use.